77% of Biotechnica subscribers have told me that they want to build a research career, a strong research career and want to become a scientist. Now that's a very big population, that's a very big size of people who want to build their career in research. And to help you do just that, I'm going to make this video where I'm going to tell you how to make your research career profile stronger while you are still in your BSc as a 22 year old or just getting started with your career. How can you make your research career profile so strong that as soon as you get out, you have research jobs available. Now, one thing we all have to remember is while you are still in your, in your bachelor's, there's a foundation on which your research career building is going to start. Okay. So whatever I say, apart from that, the first point which I would like to make here, even before I start giving you the tips is, please build your foundation. Whatever tips I give you will be add on to that, but please build your foundation, study your core subjects thoroughly because you are going to build a great building on the top of this foundation. So that's my first point. Now let's move on to the tips and tricks which will make and empower your research career. The first and foremost will be what? Staying up to date. You see, biosciences uh, field is evolving. It's changing by the minute. The older trends are getting replaced by the new ones. The permanent trends are turning into traditions and the traditions are dying and being replaced by new trends. This keeps happening throughout. What used to be a trend or a norm of the industry is no longer there. So that means you need to be updated with the latest whatever is happening in the biotech industry. Now, there are two things which you should know. One is of course the biotech news and the second is what kind of jobs are being posted in the biotech industry? What kind of projects are coming? What kind of research is going on in which particular lab? And what are the skill set they're asking for? So these things you have to remember and that is the point which I wanted to make the first point which is stay up to date with the latest research and stay up to date with the latest demands of the industry. So that's the first point. Let's move on to the second point. The second point is actually correlated to the first point and that is develop a strong skill set which is being demanded by the industry. So for example, right now the industry is demanding you to become a, you know, a biochemist with CRISPR, CRISPR technology skill set or maybe you, you require, they are asking you for whole genome sequencing, next genome sequencing, NGS or anything which is being demanded by the industry. So if you, have, you already know that, now you start building that skill set. One of the most primary skill set which you can build today, that is your communication skills networking skills. So these things I'll come to a bit later, but the first one is build your communication skills and at the same time, build your technical skills, interpersonal skills. These are the skill sets you need to upgrade and that's where you will realize that over a period of time, you have evolved as a professional and this will help you in your career. This will help you throughout your research career. Okay. Now let's move on to the third point. The third point is publish your research. Now, what happens? To publish your research, first you need to do, do some research projects. So reach out to your professors. If not, reach out to some labs in your city, in your area. Volunteer or find out if they can give you a research position. Do that research and then publish that research in collaboration with others. Remember, when you are doing a research, you are learning. Right? You are not just learning the research part of it, but learning teamwork. You are learning how to... Um, develop and collaborate stuff, how to reach out, you're learning networking and a lot of stuff. So it's very important to first do that. And once you've done that, publish your research. It is very much possible to publish your research in your bachelor's as well as your master's, start doing that. At least one research paper in a peer reviewed journal will have, will open great avenues for you because then you can reach out to professors and uh, research scholars and scientists in other labs citing that I have already done it Give me a chance, I want to do it again and they will definitely help you out. So that's the third point for you, which is publish your research. Now let's move on to the fourth point. The fourth point is collaborate. Now, whenever you are going to work in the future in uh, any kind of research, you're going to collaborate, right? So in your college itself, if you find someone, or if you find that there is some event happening, there's some uh, you know party which is going to happen or some festival, Please volunteer and please collaborate. Please work as a team and learn the, how to work as a team. Because when you collaborate with different teams, different people, different vendors, you learn, right? And that will come handy when you will actually start pursuing your research career. Because research is nothing but collaboration. Many times you will be in a lab where that particular technique is not there, that particular instrument is not there. Now you need to, you need to reach out to another lab. Maybe HPLC is not here. You have to reach out to another person who has 
the facility and convince him that he will allow you to perform your experiment. And that is where collaboration and networking skills will come into picture. So that's my fourth point. Go learn to collaborate while you're still in college. It will give you immense benefits when you start your research career. Let's move on to the next point. The next point is networking. Now, what really happens is I recently did a session also for networking on LinkedIn, but there are various other ways of doing networking. So let's start with the first part. Whenever you want to do networking, remember that networking starts from within the college. So reach out to your professors, reach out to your colleagues, reach out to your seniors and, uh, you know, send them LinkedIn requests, connect with them. And now at the same time, attend a lot of conferences, attend a lot of uh, events, workshops, because that will help you connect with a lot of national as well as international expert speakers who themselves are uh, stalwarts of their industry. And when you have reached, you, you know, uh, networked with them, in future, whenever you require anything, you can always reach out and they'll guide you, help you. So that's something which is invaluable, which is indispensable, which is something which you must have it. So learn networking and I keep doing a lot of networking workshops at Biotechnica. If you subscribe to Biotechnica's YouTube channel, you will definitely be notified about that whenever we do next. Okay, so that's about the fifth point. Let's move on to the sixth point now. The sixth point is seek out mentorship. You see, there are two ways of learning. One is you commit a mistake for continuous 10 years and then you learn how to do the things right away. Or you reach out to someone who has a lot of experience in committing mistakes and learn from that person, right? And that's where a mentor comes into picture. And that is where I want to tell you, please do not reach out to some fake gurus who, you know, uh, pretend to be mentors, but actually they're not. Instead, reach out to some people who are themselves implementers, people who have done it, been there, done that, probably uh, your project guide, probably um, anybody in the industry, um, a scientist or a professor, or if you want, you can reach out to me also for mentorship. So what happens now is when you seek out mentorship, they will guide you, they will give you the right steps and they will respond to you faster because you would, you would have networked with them and that will re result in better uh, research career. They will give you the right direction and if you pursue that direction, you will be successful faster, right? So mantra for today is not to compete with anybody but collaborate and seek mentorship with the right mentor and that's how you grow. So in bachelors itself, you can do that. The first thing you can do is network with me, meet me on LinkedIn, the link is given in the description and we can connect together and find out what works for you and I'll help you out there. So let's jump, jump into the next point which I have for you. Now the next point which I have is consider additional training. Now what kind of training you can have? There are five types of training you can have. The fir first is seeking a higher degree, maybe masters or PhD. The second is um, hands-on training. The third is virtual training which can be uh, the same hands-on training in the virtual environment, which is online. And the third, fourth could be uh, attending a workshop online or offline. Or fifth could be doing an internship online or offline. So these are the five ways you can you know, grow and strengthen your research career further. But one point I would like to highlight here is additional training is very much required, but not at the expense of your regular classes. So if your classes are running and at the same time, you can go for online and virtual trainings. And whenever you have summer breaks, summer internships, you can fall, do or winter internships, you can do uh, dissertations, you can do whenever the college allows. So these things will always be there. But you have to do more than what your classmates are doing. That's where you will stand out of the crowd. And that is something you have to remember. Now, the eighth and the last part of today's video is going to be be persistent. Now, whenever you are pursuing your research degree, you have to remember that results come in decades, effort goes in day in, day out. So you have to put in effort every day. Result may not come for decades and then finally one day you have discovered something. So this is how research works. And of course, with the new advent of new tools and technologies and skill set, it is getting faster and accelerated. So in the near future, it won't take uh, a decade to achieve, you know, discover something. But yeah, definitely you have to put in effort. So you have to be persistent. You have to keep learning. You have to keep hustling. You have to keep growing in your career and you have to keep reaching out to new people, network with them, collaborate with them and find out how they can help you by trying to help them. So this is all about today's video. This is how you can build a strong research career, research profile while you're still in your college, while you're still in your BSCs and that is where you'll grow in your life. So all the best to all the research enthusiasts out, out there who want to make a career in research. I'm right here to guide you, mentor you, support you. So comment below whatever your questions. I'll try to help you out as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon on the next one. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.